Living beings have many ways of moving. Some of them do not have any extremities, while others have more than a thousand feet. Some animals build roads, and others use lubricants. In this chapter, we'll see how animals move on land or in the air, and how one of them, a two-legged one, decided to be the fastest on land, to fly the highest, and to reach beyond its own biological limits. Another hot summer is ending on the European continent. The last plants have germinated and let their seeds loose. It's the moment the ants are waiting for. Their restless movements show the speed they have to work at, since very soon the rains and the cold weather will arrive. These tiny insects search around their nest in the hopes the supplies they get will let them endure the hard winter months. In this season, small traffic jams appear on these little country roads. But these roads are not covered by asphalt, but by a layer of chemical substances that marks the shortest route between the food source and the pantry. It's a scented communication system. Ants follow the odor left by their earlier colleagues while they reinforce it. The pheromone roads run filled with information that only ants can understand. These are peculiar traffic laws, similar to ours, even with traffic jams. However, ants' roads are not permanent like these other ones and do not have the same serious environmental effects. The Earth's hardest working insects make detours and build bridges that are only used for a few hours before vanishing. During those short periods, the colony will work extra hours carrying and hauling seeds all the way. Then, when the supplies are finished, the traffic jam vanishes. It's as if the ants were the walkers and the path at the same time. These virtual highways disappear after the last car has gone through. In other places, it's very difficult, almost impossible, to pass through without leaving a trace. In soil this soft, no animal can avoid sinking, and the shortest trip over sand is exhausting. Therefore, some animals have adjusted their feet to these conditions. The best solution is to distribute your body weight over the largest possible surface area. It's just a question of physics. The special little hairs on this beetle's back legs are the most useful and ingenious devices to move around here. Anything that provides a wider support surface facilitates your movements. Besides, the sand is burning hot, so you better not sink in it. Over the cold snow, the problem is exactly the same as over hot sand. Naturally, in those regions where snow is just an occasional occurrence, animals do not specialize too much. However, for this hare, it's better to be ready for a speedy run than for a walk over an occasionally snowy surface. When a slip makes you cross the border from life to death, 
You can't leave it up to fate. Like all other animal runners, hares have padded feet that increase their road holding power. But their true control devices are their claws. An athlete only needs to gain a few tenths of a second to cross the line from failure to a record in the competitive world of sports. The spikes that athletes wear give their feet the same grip on the road as claws provide the hairs. Flat ground is also dangerous. There are flat terrains that are slippery and on which you may need special adherence. Every kind of safe movement has been invented in the natural world. Many species move in a three-dimensional world that sometimes is upside down. Therefore, their feet have natural spikes and crampons to help them escape the strong force of gravity. And for them, it's not entertainment or sport. They're looking for shelter or for food. In a world of hungry beings, Safety is always a relative concept. Tree frogs do not have any spikes or hooks, but they have designed some very powerful suction cups for their fingertips. They stick to trees thanks to the vacuum effect produced when the suction cups are pressed against a flat surface. Their suction cups are identical to ours. If there is enough pressure, nothing can get between the two surfaces, and the suction cup can be removed easily only by introducing just a little air in between. This curious adjustment allows these amphibians to move in a world completely different from the aquatic environment we associate them with. Frogs are not the only animals that use such an original system. Many species of caterpillar have strange suction cup feet. Most of them spend their lives on the plant they were born on and never reach the ground. They're always moving around on stems and fighting for the juicier leaves. They depend on the power of their suction cups. It's clear this caterpillar is not of the same species as the previous ones. It spends most of its life on the ground. It seems to prefer dry branches to fresh leaves. This strange behavior begins to make sense later in the day. The caterpillar carefully collects and cuts plant parts that it joins with silk to make a structure to cover its body. This shelter provides the animal with isolation and rest and turns it invisible to its enemies.